Welcome to the Neurotic Podcast, the internet computer podcast with Jesse and Kyle. This is episode six. Kyle, how are we doing this week? I'm doing good, Jesse. Just as always, I'm, I'm looking forward to this episode. We got a lot of good topics to get to. We've got some really good topics to jump into, and we've got a lot of follow-up. Follow-up. I love follow-up. We've got we've got like our little pet topics that we like dive into, and you know, everything begins, ends, ever all conversations lead to the NNS. And we have we have an update on the NNS spam situation. Could you give us like a, a 60 second previously on recap of what's going on with the NNS spam situation? Yeah, so you have um, you have a problem with spam from two points of views, right? Uh, so there's a problem where uh, the NNS can be used to basically broadcast any message you want, and your cost is just one ICP. So you can use it as like a marketing tool, uh, which is not the intent. And then the second problem is uh, the governance rewards uh, are so far weighted to encourage participation in governance, which also means that uh, when there's governance proposals, those who are participating get greater rewards. So we're getting some spam for just the purpose of generating a ton of rewards for those who are voting. Yeah, it's kind of like a classic example of too much of a good thing, where on one hand, uh, we do need definitely to fix this. But on the other hand, I love my sweet, sweet rewards. And I am voting. No, because you get you get part of the problem, right, is the incentive structure. So you're getting incentivized, even if you vote no, all of us, even that agree the spam situation is a real problem that has to be dealt with. We're also getting paid while we're while we're trying to work on it. Yeah, yeah, and and I, and I get that, um, and and I as well am enjoying the increased rewards. Um, and so you know, there's, um, you know, again going back, I think we've talked a couple for the last couple of weeks about the idea that it's more important to create a robust decision making process than it is to make good decisions right here and now. Um, that's how you get long term sustainability. So I think that's really what the community's kind of circled around at this point. I'm really torn because you make a strong point, but my lizard brain tells me to tell you that your mom's a robust decision making process. So I'm not <laughs> sure how to proceed here. I was not. We're 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 uh, what are we? Uh, two minutes in, and you made a your mom joke, Jesse. I was not expecting that. Well, your mom cares a lot about governance procedure. That's that's just how that your family rolls, Mama Mama Langham. You know, <laughs> um, what? So why don't you summarize what what created our our spam NNS spam crisis situation? What created the opportunity for those governance rewards were um, some proposals that went through way back in February um, that basically weighted governance proposals higher, um, as well as removed default followings for um, governance proposals. Um, even at that time, it was recognized within the community that this was a potential problem, and it really was like um, it remained a potential problem until I don't know a week and a half ago, um, when a uh, user who goes by Ysins, who we talked about in the last episode, started making um, you know I'm going to say spam or junk because those are the two words he himself has used or she, um, and uh, started making proposals for the purpose of advertising and for those governance rewards. So there was a flurry of activity trying to figure out ways to solve this. And you and Wenzel put up uh, a couple different suggestions that were, let's say, received critically, maybe would be a nice way to, to undersell the, the reception. But you two are gluttons for punishment uh, as political NNS players, political operatives. You're like Aaron Sorkin, fast talking, walking and talking you know, figuring this out. And so you, you, the two of you are back with a, he's like a writing partner. You guys are like a, a TV show writing partner. Only you write governance proposals. I like, this... You make these pop culture references and I'm like, okay, that sounds good. <laughs> I think you just enjoy the sound as they go, as they go whizzing, whizzing by. Yeah. West wing, Aaron Sorkin's okay. Okay. TV right. show from, you know, forever. And ago. Aaron Sorkin is a writer or a director. A uh, actor? I mean, I think he's mostly known for being a Coke addict at this point, but uh, okay. yeah, gotcha. he's uh yeah. Aaron Sorkin, he's a writer director. He wrote, uh, he wrote a few good men. Uh, oh, good you movie. can't handle, right. You can't handle the truth. Uh, and then he wrote uh, West Wing, and he wrote the first four seasons of West Wing almost single-handedly, and then was fired by NBC uh, because, again, Coke the problem. Coke. The Coke. <laughs> um, and so he then wrote a TV show. I like how you and I are like, we don't have a ton of time to record. Let's stay focused. Let's and I'm stay. like, let me just quickly run through the filmography of Aaron Sorkin here. Uh, so then he wrote um, a TV show called Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip which is a extremely serious TV show set inside Saturday Night Live. 
And it is so terrible that I cannot recommend it highly. Wait, wait, enough. it's a serious, it's a serious show yes. set inside the set inside like basically like an SNL type uh, setting. Yes, and your your the face you're making, the question, wait. the I you are correctly interpreting the information I am giving okay. you. It actually premiered simultaneously with Thirty Rock and great show. Thir- great show, right? And at the time, Thirty Rock was the little the little pu- plucky show that no one had ever heard of, and Studio Sixty was the follow up to the biggest television show in the world. And Studio Sixty face planted so hard, I have never seen anything quite like it. Uh, but yeah, it has Matthew Perry and Bradley Whitford, and I forget. I think Matthew Perry is the. Uh, is the stand-in sort of avatar character for uh, for Aaron Sorkin, who's writing the show. And so, yeah, genuinely terrible. Do not recommend. Not good. And so, and then he's done other stuff since then. So he did a terrible show called The Newsroom. Uh, oh, on I like that show. I that think. show was oh, oh, awful. No, no, I'm thinking, what was the one with the sportscasters from the uh, late ah, 90s? Yes. So that's Sports Night. Sports Night. That's Sports right. Night. That is Aaron Sorkin. That is actually oh, really? Aaron Sorkin. That's Aaron Sorkin's first show. Yes. Okay. With uh, Felicia, um, what's her name? Yes. Uh, no, yeah. Yeah. And Joshua Molina, who appears in like all everything he does. And so Josh Molina is on, he's the main character. He's the uh, main character on that show, the sort of protagonist that's like getting hired. And then he ends up joining, he was in um, the stage version of A Few Good Men as well, which is why he has a relationship. I know way too much about this, <laughs> it, turns, it turns out. Do, do you want to change this podcast into be like a, more of a... Um, uh, Jesse teaches Kyle about pop culture. I mean, that's what is the this... after show I feel like is kind of themed <laughs> at this point uh, or recommendations are themed that way. So anyway, so Josh. All right. So all right. Josh Molina did a podcast called West Wing Weekly uh, a few years ago where he recapped the entire show at one episode at a time with another co-host. Okay. And they went through the whole thing. And obviously he had a lot of backstage stories and knows Aaron Sorkin and knows all the actors. And so they had all of like the cast and all the different people come in and talk about it. And so if you liked the West Wing, uh, West Wing Weekly was really, really good. He co-hosted that with uh, Rishikesh Hirwe, who does the Song Exploder podcast, which is now a TV show on Netflix. That's also very, very good, too. Oh, cool. And is this so, is this your recommendation? No, I mean, I mean, maybe, 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 maybe I'll make it Studio 60 my recommendation <laughs> and then people will stop asking me for for recommendations. You and Wenzel are back with a new proposal to fix everything and save democracy. Such a smooth segue back in. Right, right. Um, as, all right, uh, so, as subtle as an Aaron Sorkin line. <laughs> yeah, Wenzel and I have put, put forth our own proposal. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of other good ideas that are being generated through the community. Uh, and that's, again, what we want to go to. Um, I don't, I'll speak for Wenzel here, or maybe I shouldn't speak for Wenzel, but I'll just say for myself, and I'm going to guess Wenzel's in the same boat. We don't want to be the only two people. We don't even want to be the only like uh, two of 20 people. We want a strong community where um, there's lots of ideas being uh, organized and there's uh, leaders who are driving those ideas towards consensus and and implementation. Um, So that's kind of where Wenzel and I are right now. We have our own proposal that we've modified um, to essentially reset followees um, every six months for all, all voting. Um, I, you know, I think that's a great solution, but there's also some other really good solutions. We discussed some on the last podcast. I won't go over them again, but really what we want to get to is one NNS proposal that announces, Hey, these are the ones that are, these are the proposals that are going to come to the NNS in the next week. Um, so that all the voters can basically sit down and say, okay, over the next week, I'm going to be faced with these five proposals or six proposals. These are the ones I'm going to vote for. These are the ones I'm going to vote against. Um, really, the idea being that we should be able to take these ideas um, as a we, as in the NNS voting group, should uh, take the ideas and say, relative to the other ideas, these are the ones I'm in favor for, um, and then move forward from there. So one of the things I really love about doing this podcast and talking to you is we're like really talking about things and actually like, you know, digging into it and my brain is processing it live as we're talking about it. Mm. And so last week when we were talking about this, my like sort of epiphany moment where a light bulb went off in my head was like, we created this situation. Not only like like we passed resolutions that changed the governance, that changed the the weighting of rewards, and then we and then Wenzel demoed how to spam 
the NNS system, yes. like in, in completely in good faith. But that was my it's like the are we the baddies gif. That was my like big like epiphany light bulb glass shattering moment was, oh, we the community 100 percent created the situation and we the community also have to fix it. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it was always, again, we, I think we knew within the community, like, Hey, this is going to be a problem at some point. We probably could have been more proactive about solving it, but there's something about just, Hey, having a problem be shoved down your throat twice a day right now um, with, with these voting proposals that really kind of galvanizes the conversation and, and brings out the idea. So I'm honestly, I'm very pleased at how everything's going in terms of that. Um, I think we're on the path to making a good decision. There might be other unintended consequences as we move forward. And then we just deal with those as we go. Um, the big key, the key takeaway, though, um, and I want people to uh, really take home is that governance participation went from like three to five percent of the total voting power to 47 to 49 percent now. And so that's we, we're making good strides. All right. So I want to restate what the proposal does and make sure I'm understanding it. So we created the situation. So it used to be that it was sort of a set it and forget it. You follow Definity or whoever, and then it's done. Now we have more named neurons coming online. More people are able to be leaders and vote in the community. We created a situation where the whole delta with the governance tokens is because people have not gone in and named, you know, the Maximalist Network or CycleDAO as their follow. And that's a little bit of a problem. And the solution now is, we say, no, 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 totally passive participation is no longer going to work. We're going to raise the threshold of minimum participation, but we're going to raise it again, log in and spend one minute every six months is not exactly asking like a totally huge amount of time commitment from people. And we're going to require you to ratify those follow neurons every six months or so. Otherwise, your participation will, it sort of drops off. So it's kind of like, do you ever play? Uh, you ever play Zelda: Breath of the Wild? Do you ever play that game? Ooh, I, I after the first Zelda, I stopped playing because it was just the first one was so good. I, I didn't want to ruin the <laughs> top. To, top to, I didn't want to see the sequels because the first so one good. was. So, I liked a few good men so much that yeah. I didn't want to see anything he did after it. It would pollute. <laughs> it, would, it would dilute it. So in um, in Zelda: Breath of the Wild, they have a decaying mechanic with all of your weapons. So every mm. weapon you pick up begins to immediately decay. And the more you use it, the more it disappears. And so that's the idea here is your uh, follow decision has a half-life and will decay over time. And you are required to be an active participant. You don't have to vote on everything, but you do have to get in there and be active. And so in some ways, this could actually, again, raise governance uh, rewards in some interesting ways as well, right? Right. So, well, so it's not really a decay mechanism. It's a, it's a cliff mechanism. Every six months, you sh it, the requirement would just, uh, under our proposal would be every six months, you just have to go into the NNS and say, basically click a button that says, I'm still, I st I'm still interested in following, you know, this, this neuron for these topics. Uh, once you click that button, the timer resets to six months and keeps going. Or if you change your followees, it gets set to six months, but basically just every six months we want a neuron holder to have to just go in and say, yes, I'm still supporting this person. And if you stop, if you don't do it in six months, um, your follow, your follower, your followee basically just goes away. So you're no longer following anyone. Um, so yeah, so I mean, under that, under that, everyone who's participating in governance would get higher rewards because the people who aren't part, being part, who aren't participating would suddenly get no rewards um, after their six months was up. Um, and in addition, I, I like to think of it more as like an, um, uh, in, in, a, in like a political sense, right? It's more like um, you might support a political party, but every election season, you have to go out and vote for a candidate. Um, you don't you don't turn voting age and then say, I am in this political party and forever, forever, I'm going to be part of that political party. Um, you have to kind of like re-up it every time. Um, and here's a situation that really solves that. I don't think we've really thought through the community is, let's say you set up a follow -y, you know, let's say you're following ICPMN, uh, and then you die, right? And nobody takes over your neuron. Uh, guess what? ICPMN has now forever voting power because nobody's going to come take that away from them. Um, and that's going to be true for any single named neuron. So um, it, it also solves that problem. Or let's go the other direction. Uh, uh, ICPMN might become corrupt and yes. voting against my interests. And, you know, you and Wenzel and Bob and all the other voters put on your black goatees and come mm -hmm. over from the mirror universe 
and start voting for things I don't I don't <laughs> approve of. Yeah, yeah. And so I th- I think our proposal honestly is a is the direction that I would like to see the NNS go in anyways, um, regardless of this problem. Um, there's other solutions that I think we also should be exploring, like the raising the minimum uh, rejection cost of a proposal from one to five or ten. Um, that's that's a proposal that'll come through. Um, and then uh, there, I think also parallel to this, I'm really hoping people in the community um, start stepping up and saying, look, I want to name Neuron. This is the interests I'm going to represent with my name Neuron and really start socializing it to get people to follow them. Because I um, don't think ICPMN should have as much voting power as it does. Uh, and I think it only helps the community if there's more and more and more named Neurons that people are following and the vote is distributed across um, a variety, a diversity of, of um, viewpoints. So I have a, a serious question and a joke. Which okay. which one would you like? Which let's one go. Would you like first? Let's go serious. I'm I'm in a serious mood right serious now. Serious question. Um, I don't understand how this fixes the problem. Why Why does reiterating your voting uh, alignment not? How does that fix the incentivization to not spam the NNS? It's based on the assumption that, so there's what, 51% of people of, of voting power that is not voting at all. And it's that 51% that creates the incentive for governance proposals. So again, if you think back to the spam, there's advertising is one reason and um, governance weighting is the second reason. It's always that second reason, the assumption being that that 51% will probably lose their followers on all topics except governance, which means the governance topics won't be... Um, won't won't be weighted like the 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 discrepancy won't be as as great or even really worthwhile of putting in proposals for that purpose. So it'll it rebalances it by making it so that the weighting governance it rebalances everything else heavier so that the scales tip and balance out like the bad guy in the new Moon Knight show his his scale tattoo. I know that doesn't mean anything okay, to you, gosh, but someone how, out here. How I'm not watching enough. TV, I guess. Okay, Moon. Oh, okay, Moon. Well, hold on, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> on save that. Thing. Save that for recommendations. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, so the idea is right now, it's like if you picture it, it's like because of the name Neuron default followers, mm-hmm. you know, tech upgrades is 100 percent participation. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever the I other could, categories are, and no, then governance exchange is, rates, no yeah. exchange. That's all 100, 100, 100, 100, and then you get to governance and it's 50, and that's what creates the imbalance. Mm-hmm. The assumption is here that this will then make it so that everything is 50, which yep. is kind of the same as everything is 100 because it's the delta that's yep. the that's the issue. The, yep. exactly. Why does Nailed this it. not incentivize me to spam all the other? So aren't I incentivized to spam everything, not just governance then? And why does this eliminate the well, governance spam issue? So at that point, if, if, that, if everything is equal, uh, all the different uh, voting topics are equal, um, then it doesn't matter how many proposals or what the distribution is of those proposals. It doesn't really matter at that point. I like how this is attacking the problem systematically to to solve it from like a big picture. So my other question. Yeah, what's the joke? I want to hear the joke. Oh, so when I was in college, I was in uh, a fraternity, which is not something I realize you get from looking at me. And we had uh, the fraternity had meetings and we used like parliamentary procedure and things like that. to vote. Okay. And I. Um, uncharacteristically for me, uh, created what I called the party caucus, which was a voting block that always voted pro party um, <laughs> on all resolutions <laughs> as, as a voting block. And I was wondering if a, a party caucus could find a home. I think the, so. At the NNS. I think so. We're just, we're just pro party, you know, <laughs> like I'm going to follow cycle Dow on everything. That's not a party vote. And then it, once, yeah. once it comes down to like a fiesta or a, um, Cinque Terre, I don't know. I'm trying to think of different parties. Quinceanera. Quinceanera, yeah, yes. Bar Mitzvah. Uh, uh, bar Mitzvah. Uh, I'm going to vote yes on all those. I mean, I've been to some good funerals, too. Some the food at funerals can be quite quite strong. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've missed. That's been a real problem with living through a panoramic is not getting to go to good weddings with an open bar. I've, I've living, really missed living, it. You, okay, that's going as a show title. Living, living through, through a panoramic. You haven't heard that before? <laughs> living through a panoramic? Oh, oh, I thought that I thought you I thought that was a mistake on your part. No, you know, that was that was just a joke that wi- another uh, one that whizzed by your another pop culture right. reference there. This proposal is going up. So does this proposal kind of fix all the issues really? No, no, it doesn't fix the um, the incentive to spam for the purpose of advertising. Um, but again, that's the whole point is uh, we want there's a lot of great ideas. We're at that point where we've done a great brainstorming as a community and we need mm-hmm. to start narrowing down to like, hey, 
it's great to come up with ideas, but we need um, we need the NNS to really kind of decide. Here's the ideas that we want to implement. Um, yeah. It could be one idea. It could be three, four ideas. It doesn't really, as long as we're just moving towards that, um, getting towards implementation and, and resolving the issue then. And I've actually, in reading and conversations, I've actually flipped my position on another aspect of this. I yeah. I know. I agree that we should raise the one ICP number. I think that, well. yeah, that makes and sense. And I was thinking about this, and I have an idea, and I think it, I think it might be kind of smart, and I want to workshop it with you, Okay. that it's essentially a modified version of proof of stake. It's essentially a version. It's literally putting up a pile of cash to okay. prove that you are operating in good faith. And if you are operating good faith, you are rewarded for it. And if you are not operating in good faith, you are punished for it, which is essentially how proof of stake works as opposed to. And in fact, yeah. if anything, your solution requiring everyone to log in every six months is a proof of proof work, of work. analog, uh -huh. right? So we're, we've are we got <laughs> all the different. I mean, it's a proof of work that does not destroy the environment, which is my you know pet issue, obviously. Uh, but it's essentially it's it's, you know, we've got cap, we've got literal cash and we've got labor and those are the two essential knobs we can move this is just turning into like a Karl Marx conversation yeah. now hey yeah when we run out of material for the podcast uh, and maybe this is for our listeners like how they'll know that we're running short on material is let's let's have that debate on is bitcoin killing the environment I think I think that would be an interesting conversation. You can you have that debate on my forum, uh, propo on my NNS proposal right now. I mean, the answer is yes, <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. I mean, there's no debate. Bitcoin is killing the environment. Uh, well, hold on. We're, we're, not, we're not going to go down. The, and we're not going to go down because we're already we're already. Uh, no, no, no. It's low fine. On. I edit this podcast. All of your objections; those are on the cutting room floor. It's just me talking. You it's guys can't hear it. Points. Kyle is objecting to what I'm saying, but that's gone now because I run. This is not an, you can submit an NNS proposal to have your opinion heard in this segment. Uh, no. And so, yeah, obviously Bitcoin is hugely bad for the environment. And that is because their incentives are aligned where you make money by doing bad things for the environment. And their whole system is designed that way and has a lack of scaling. Unlike, for example, the internet computer, which was actually... One of the interesting things I've really learned in doing working on my sustainability proposal, which we'll get to in a second, yeah. is that Dom was in the like initial conceptions of how to create the internet computer and how to design it and how chain key architecture works. Um, that was a big point that Dom pushed in a big way was uh, this needs to be super, super efficient. This is an issue that's only going to get bigger over time and we have to future proof ourselves and create something designed for scaling. Uh, because that's the whole problem. Because really, that's the issue. It's the scaling that's happening. It's not just the it's not just the uh, process itself. It's that it as 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 scaled. So yeah. it wasn't an issue in 2010 when there's like 14 people mining Bitcoin. So so okay, well, <laughs> we're gonna go down this rabbit hole. Um, because actually, I'm gonna tie it back into internet. Yeah, we're computer. never running out of material. Every week, yeah. our list of topics is longer than we can possibly get to. So, all right, here's here's my argument pro Bitcoin and the environment. Um, okay, and and just a virtue signal. I've got solar panels on my roof. I've got an EV car, so I I feel like I'm talking um, with a little bit of um, green cred uh, when I say this. Um, but in the same, I don't way, have any of those things for the record. But yeah. I have an NNS proposal, so. <laughs> one, and that's one also I just okay I just I know it's a hot topic that's not virtual signal virtue signaling because virtue signaling implies that it's an empty gesture you're actually doing again it's aligning mm. incentives so by having solar panels on your roof your electricity goes down that you have to pay big electricity and right, so right, it, right, right. this is the whole idea it's, is you align incentives where what's good for the environment is good for you and that's what ICP does, and that's what Bitcoin doesn't do. Okay, yeah. So, um, so yeah, the IRR on my uh, um, my solar panels and my car were were great. They're great investments. Um, so here's the argument for Bitcoin, and this is how I view it: is just in the sense that you know when I bought an electric vehicle, my electricity usage went up by a lot. But the idea is that it's offsetted by the net gain of not burning gasoline in a car. That's the way I think of Bitcoin is humankind. Okay, so actually, first let me say gold, uh, it's something like 89% of gold usage is, is to put it into gold bars for the purpose of um, a store of value. 
And that's because humans have a need for there to be something that requires a lot of work to get a little bit of something so that it stores value, right? That's just like a human need. All of our financial, uh, all currencies are kind of based on that. Um, trust, like really like financial trust comes back to that. And so what Bitcoin is doing is taking in an industry, which is gold mining, which is uh, 10x the polluter that Bitcoin is right now. And it's replacing that. So it's basically a um, the same way that my electric vehicle replaces the gas uh, that I would use in a, a gasoline power car. Bitcoin is replacing a, a heavy polluting industry that is gold. Um, and I think when the internet computer does direct integration with Bitcoin, so you have sound money with Bitcoin because it requires a lot of work to produce a very little amount of things. Um, although that is skip. Uh, so, um, and the internet computer by adding a level of um, uh, transportability, interactivity, um, program ability. And if there's any other illities I can throw in there, I'll throw them in there. I think that is really a green solution for what I would consider like the money, the money carbon problem, I guess. Right. I agree with everything you said, except for your core point. <laughs> at the heart, of this <laughs> I, I reject, I reject Hey, look how much worse my neighbor is as a viable argument for this because but it's not it's not a neighbor it's it's a it's a direct replacement it's a direct replacement the more bitcoin is adopted the less gold is needed as a store of value yes and for example that doesn't make what bitcoin is doing good it makes it less incredibly terrible than gold okay look capitalism is bad the gold industry is bad diamonds are a lie created by de bears to force you to buy blood diamonds that are also bad it's all bad bitcoin is 10 percent less bad and ethereum is less bad than bitcoin and ethereum is making the move very slowly very painfully to a proof of stake instead of a proof of work because it's bad. So I don't have a disagreement with anything you're saying except for saying that the fact that Bitcoin is better than gold is itself good because we don't, again, the planet is dying and we don't need a solution that's less bad. We need a solution that's good. It's much so better. Bitcoin, Bitcoin tomorrow could be rebuilt on chain key technology and eliminate all of the electrical usage it's using. That would be good. I feel that's like that's that's my point that that I agree with everything you're saying right up until the point where you're like, well, you know, it's like you're giving me the choice between a donut, which is delicious, but bad for me and a low fat donut, which is less delicious and less bad for me, but not good. I could eat an apple or a salad, you know, and I don't want to say ICP is a salad because that I mean, I really like salads because I live in California and vegetables are delicious. It's, yeah. But um, <laughs> my point, I don't I don't. Yeah. I mean, with all of this stuff, the point I always come back to is the problem is the Ultron problem. The problem is the people, yeah. not the technology. And so it's what people do with it. But I, I totally agree with you that that all of these things are future facing and that they're major improvements, just like uh, the first cars were incredibly gas inefficient. And, you know, you look at cars from the 50s, they're gorgeous. They're beautiful. I want one. But I want one where that giant eight liter, uh, you know, eight cylinder engine that goes through like I drove a uh, I had my grandparents Cadillac in, nice. uh, in high school, like a 91 DeVille. I got eight miles to the gallon <laughs> driving that around in high school. I mean, gas was 99 cents a gallon. Oh, I remember those days. A, a gallon for our European listeners is, uh, I don't know, a little less it's than one half. Point, uh, 1.6 liters. OK, we get it. You're good at math. Um, it's on the toilet. So... <laughs> it's, it's a number on, every time you go to the urinal, it tells you one point. I've liters. learned involving gas in urinals not to read what the sign says because it just makes me sad. <laughs> uh, boy, we are missing a whole world there, Jesse. All right, should, should we talk about the internet computer on this podcast? Out of <laughs> I don't know why we would want to do that. <laughs> no. So my my whole point is, uh, yes, it is less bad than those other things that are very bad, but that is not a you know, I'm in a, a little bit of an imperialist, empiricist here where we should be doing the things that are actively good. And I want to move all of these systems to places that are genuinely good, which is why I mm -hmm. took advantage of the fact that we operate inside of a digital democracy with the NNS and am putting forward my own sustainability proposal 
because ICP is already green. It's already a good solution. I just want to prove it. And so I, uh, we're, we're, I'm segmenting, I'm, I'm segueing us uh, via a battery powered segue into our, our next topic here, which is an update on my sustainability proposal. And so I put up a forum discussion, just as a little reminder to work through this process. You come up with your idea, write up your process, um, show it to some smart people is my advice. And then you put it up on the forums, uh, the developer forums and uh, get feedback there. I've been posting it to Twitter and having a lot of conversations. And I have to say, if anything, I'm a little disappointed that I haven't had more pushback. I thought I'd be having more all caps Twitter fights that I'm having. And instead, everyone has been really nice and really supportive. And I was kind of, I mean, I think maybe maybe people that disagree with the point I'm trying to make correctly uh, guess that there's no point in arguing with me on the, <laughs> the, the overall, like that if you argue, hey, I don't think being gr sustainable is a good idea, yeah, yeah. that's going to be a bit of a it's dead end. Um, but I got the one, I got one piece of feedback, which was really strong uh, overall. So I made my, my proposal had three key points, which was to ask Definity to do a third party or an internal analysis to come up with real hard figures backed by science and data, proving exactly how sustainable the uh, internet computer is, both in, you know, in a big picture as well as on like a per transaction, because I want that as a weapon to go out and fight for ICP as the greenest blockchain in the world. And I mm -hmm. think that's a claim we might be able to make. I just want to be able to prove it and mm -hmm. have you know real numbers because we're a data-driven organization, yeah. as you know, and I love we love data around here. So that's number one. Number two was to ratify that uh, we as a community believe in global warming and want to do something about it. And then number three was to add an energy consumption panel to the dashboard. Again, surfacing that data, embracing that sort of open sense. Mm -hmm. And on both Twitter and in the forums, uh, feedback has been, hey, bullet point one is awesome. Bullet point three is awesome. Bullet point two has problems. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, after a little bit of back and forth, I decided I'm just taking that bullet point out altogether. I took a couple approaches at ways to rewrite it and, and kind of change how I approached it. And I decided, uh, again, maybe this is just the politician coming out in me, that I want as much support as possible. I want to, I want to crush the competition with this proposal. I want it to pass really, really overwhelmingly and mm -hmm. embrace that. And I'm totally willing to go back. That proposal was about laying ground. That idea didn't have an action item attached to it. It and a lot of people objected to the idea of a belief or mm. ratifying, you know, taking they're like, this makes this more political and it actually doesn't change the output of it. And in fact, the actions speak louder than words. And so mm -hmm. I can always go back and put in new proposals. So I could go back with this as its own proposal, or more likely I might come back over time with something else that again is really more built directly into action items. And so I took out proposal two, the bullet point number two. And now the proposal is just simplified. And then I feel like, I mean, I don't know if you're like this, when I sit down to write something, uh, when I write something is how I often find out how I really, really yeah. feel about it, yeah. right? Like yeah. I have an idea of what, I th what I'm thinking and I've talked about it, but then I like when I put pen to paper or fingers to keycaps, that's when I really find out exactly what, you know, my inner, you know, lizard brain is telling me what to think here yep. and yep. comes out. And What's so it? I took, What's I took out that bullet point. And then I went to, I got like my discussion explanation and I went down to the discussion explanation and discovered I didn't need to make any edits there. And the fact that mm -hmm. that bullet point wasn't supported in the follow-up writing to me even mm. spoke more strongly that everyone was right, that, that I totally agreed. I was like, let's yank this out. The proposal is stronger, simpler, and more action focused now. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, what I love about that is, is again, the process you followed you got feedback, you took it into consideration, uh, you determined that the feedback was uh, legit, especially since you know you had a bullet point that wasn't supported by follow-on documentation or, or um, follow-on uh, discussion. And and so you made adjustments. Um, but you, know, you, say, you say it's not actionable, but I, I mean, the, the action is on Definity, right? To produce this third-party audit. 
Um, no, I meant just bullet point number oh, two. Oh, just two. Was okay, yeah. Oh, I see. So number, I see. number two was saying, we believe this. We believe right, this right. to be true. Okay. And I initially included it for context mm -hmm. and for creating a my, – my reasoning for wanting it in there was to make uh, a stance as well mm -hmm. that I thought it would sound good for it, the community to make that stance. And again, what I found was I inadvertently – had put a wedge into this mm. uh, discussion that I didn't need, in fact, and that that I don't need to have a conversation about whether or not you believe in global warming when, I mean, obviously, please believe in global warming, but um, yeah. the output of those actions, see, I can't even help myself trying to inject it even into this conversation now. Well, I mean, are there, are there people who don't believe in global warming? Because, I mean, that's just data. Now, you might not believe in the source of it, Right. That's probably where the argument is. I like how I felt like I was opening up a can of worms and Let you just, just spray painted I, the walls with, yes. with a can of worm. <laughs> I would say um, so. I guess I guess the point was, hey, we can all agree that because I make an argument mm -hmm. that being green and being sustainable and using um, sustainable sources of electricity is good marketing and good business yeah. for the Internet computer. And everyone kind of said, you know, you've got those points and you make this argument. If anything, tying back to this other belief idea weakens those. Right, pieces. right. And so take those out. And so that's exactly what I did. And so nice. now we just say we're going to focus on how much electricity are we using? Where is that electricity coming from? And how do we report on that? And we focus just on that. And I can always go back and put in another proposal down the road and sort of breaking. That was actually an earlier piece of feedback I had received was, hey, you've got three bullet points. Maybe you should think about breaking these into three proposals. Hmm. And I said, that sounds like three times the work. <laughs> and uh, so I kept it together. But with the idea of, hey, I'm going into this genuinely asking for community feedback because I want the hive mind of the ICP community and NNS brain to think about these issues and help craft it and get on board too. And so it also gave me something that I said, I feel like I can back down on this bullet point and, and my critics are right. And I want to, I want to bring the critics on board. I want the people, if I can give everyone that is being critical of my first one, I cede ground to them and find consensus and get everyone on board. Maybe this will be the first proposal to pass with a hundred percent voting. I mean, it won't Ooh. be obviously, but maybe, maybe but that's the dream, right? The right, full, right. the full vote. Um, you'll have to let me know how that feels once it once it goes through. Um, so, what, so what is the next step there? The next step is to get more votes than your proposal gets. That's, that's my. That's now we're in a now we're in a friendly competition to see who it's, is. It's a class president all over again. Where I lost. If I was and, gonna bet uh, my ICP, I'd bet it on yours. <laughs> you know, I I would probably bet it on yours. So at least we're in agreement there. <laughs> So, well, yours, yours is um, going to, I, you know, like I said, I think I was pleasantly surprised that the engagement was good, but the feedback was very reasonable. And maybe, maybe I'm being a little too cynical about where people are going to land on these issues. And, and the truth is uh, the IC community is full of smart, sexy, good looking people that love to vote <laughs> for the stuff that we're putting forward. And now I'm just... Now I'm just pandering because again, full full NNS uh, politician. Full, yeah. Everyone who who votes in favor of it's just such a good looking and uh, successful person. So it no, sounds it sounds hollow and empty and pandering when you say it, but authentic and like you I say mean it. it when I when I say it. Yeah, that's that's my takeaway. <laughs> oh man. Um, so yeah, so no job well done, and I can't wait to 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 get a chance to be the lone no vote on your proposal. Oh no, 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 I'm just oh, kidding. I'll, no. vote, I'll vote. You got my vote. I got, already. I got, I get. I'll get twelve out of thirteen votes from the maximalist from network, the, yeah. and yeah. then and then you know hopefully the party caucus neuron votes for it. That's that's what. There you go. Because I think the party. I think the argument is if the uh, earth burns. Uh, no more parties. No more and parties. So yeah. it's it's in the benefit for the party caucus as well to vote pro, pro, uh, pro the environment. Yeah, I agree. Good times. Yeah, <sighs> That's, this is a fun one. So, oh, let me. So I wanted to finish. So explaining where I am in the process. So I put up the forum post a week ago. I said that at seven days, I would update the proposal and put in uh, the updated version. That went up yesterday. 
And so I've got seven more days of soliciting feedback on Twitter and in the forums. Please, there's links in the show notes. Please go voice feedback, good, bad, whatever it is. We just really would like you guys involved and to hear from you. And then it will get, uh, and then, so that's where we are today. Seven days from now, it'll be submitted into the NNS. And actually, I've been learning about how that process works. And now okay. you know you know what I'm about to say because you've gone through this. But I think this is so interesting. Submitting an NNS proposal is deploying code to the internet computer. Mm -hmm. It is not filling out a form. It is it is like dog fooding in the you know dog fooding is the programming term for when you use your own code, yep. right? You use the software you're developing, and it is genuinely dog fooding. So you actually have to. Uh, submit, you download the development environment and use the DFX deploy command, something I learned from my one day of Motoko bootcamp, and you uh, <laughs> deploy it as code because a lot of the NNS proposals are actual code. And when they get approved, that code goes live instantly, right? Mm. Governance works a little bit differently because it's the soft, squishy, meat people stuff. In right, right. And so this works a little, but you still submit it the same way. It's like submitting. Uh, I guess. I guess it's like submitting code comments is what uh, right. is, is more like what a governance proposal. So, so are you gonna are you gonna do the submission yourself? Are you gonna? No, do, no, no, I'm not. I'm you're not just gonna ask Wenzel to do it. Or? I'm gonna ask Wenzel. To oh, okay. Do it. Wenzel, Wenzel has graciously. I hope I'm not spilling any secrets here. Wenzel personally, not in his role, uh, uh, professional role, personally will submit it. Although I have to put up the. I still have to yep. put up the one yeah. ICP. And he told me that no matter what happens, I don't get that. Back. Yeah, yeah. I, so yeah, it's the same. With that me. goes that goes into the maximalist neuron, where I will contribute to uh, to that program. But I feel I feel good about that. I, I have no objections to donating one ICP. I feel good about it, yeah. and I better get in now while it's still just one ICP before that that price skyrockets. Good you point. Know, get in. Maybe I should stock up on NNS proposals now so I can sell them. As an arbitrage solution when the supply dries up in the future. And maybe, maybe you want to ask why Sims to post it for you. Maybe, yeah. No, I like the idea of can we get Entrepo to list NNS proposals and then I'll just sweep the floor then... <laughs> of, uh, of NNS proposals. <laughs> little, sure. little NFT humor for NFT. you here. <laughs> hey, let's, let's go. Let's move on. We we managed to not talk NFTs last uh, last week. Let's um let's break the streak at one. Um, so you put out that. Taco NFTs are coming to the IC. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, so I'm introducing Taco NFTs, and I am genuinely, un unironically so excited about this project. I've been working on it. It combines my passion for tacos uh, with my passion for building communities. And so uh, I've sort of dubbed this project Marketing Entrepreneurism. And so the idea is, you know, you and I talked about in the past, about the IC being a place for entrepreneurs and artists and creators and people who make things. And so this is me kind of putting my my money where my mouth is, or rather putting my taco where my mouth is in terms of trying to make something that I'm really proud of. And so it's a combination of, it's a project specifically designed to highlight the strengths of the internet computer and market the internet computer. And it's also a collection of the best practices that I've kind of put together being a part of this community too, to, to make something I'm really excited about. So as we're talking about this, we have like just announced it. So like, this is like, I've been like teasing it on Twitter, but mm -hmm. by the time this podcast episode comes out 24 hours from now, we should have launched the discord and the website will be live and you can go to taco nfts.xyz and see my webpage designing skills. I apologize. And you can see uh, see the tacos that we're making. So taco NFTs are ten thousand tacos living on the internet computer. What what can I tell you? What do you want to know about about these tacos? Can I interest you in a taco, Kyle? I, ever since you you started teasing this project, I've just wanted tacos nonstop. And uh, we actually had tacos last night, but that did that that yes. didn't. Um, what that didn't kind of tacos? The what kind of tacos did you get? Uh, they were so shredded. Well, we made them um, shredded taco, nice. uh, shredded chicken, uh, soft tortilla, uh, you know, and then the basics: cheese, salsa, taco sauce, onion. Have you you do you use TikTok? No, no. no. You should one. You should use TikTok. It's great. So uh, on TikTok, there's one uh, people can reuse audio, and so you can like you know people dance to like the same songs mm -hmm. or lip oh, I've done that. Stuff. I have done that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, you have yeah. you have like I've got three dollars, four, yeah. four, four, three dollars. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, one of them is someone, and I'm going to sing now, and I'm so sorry, but it's someone going white people taco night, white people taco <laughs> night, and that's what I'm picturing while you're describing. Yes, this. yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, so my tacos, I'm collaborating with a local LA artist. He's on Instagram at at taco And so you can tell he is also he, in the, in the, he was born cult. for this role. That's exactly, that's exactly right. I got the reference to, I got into his name's Miguel. I got introduced to him. I reached out to a writer for a local publication called LA taco. Uh, I don't know if you're feeling a theme in my real life of where, where my interests lie. Yeah. So I'm working with him and he's uh, doing the art and I'm so excited. He's really pouring himself and his passion into them. And so we're building, it's all living in Photoshop, right? And so you've got multiple layers. So we have like different types of tortillas. So yellow corn, white corn, blue corn, flour, a couple other surprise ones in there. And then we've got a list of 30 something different taco meats that we're creating and each one is being drawn individually. And then we've got a dozen or so salsas, yes or no, to cilantro on top, you know, and guacamole and things like that. And so uh, the tacos are being are specifically being designed to be published using the forthcoming Entrepot self-minting tool. So as has been clearly established, I am not a developer. So the entire project is being put together with no code, which means that you, listener, could also put together a project like this using no code. And that's one of the things I want to do as a part of this is kind of open source my process too, and encourage people to follow their passions and create communities that use the ICP technology stack to do it, which is, which is what I'm doing. So right now it all lives in a Photoshop file, making all these different layers. They'll be assembled and minted. Uh, minting is going to be about 30 ish days away from right now. Uh, discord is live. We're going to build community on the discord. Uh, we're creating a whitelist right now. We're going to have around a thousand spots on the whitelist. I like a nice big whitelist. Okay. We're going to probably limit the number of tacos you can get on your whitelist um, to something like three to five. I'm not sure of the number yet, but we're going to do a 20% discount off of minting price for the whitelist okay. uh, as well. I have not announced the exact price. We're going to kind of nail that down as it gets closer. But what I will say is we have a overall philosophy of their tacos. They're supposed to be cheap and cheerful and they will be priced like tacos. They will be like a normal taco price. Nice. And so very, very inexpensive. And I specifically want to sell them, not airdrop them, because one of the things I'm really highlighting is you can only do cheap and cheerful on a blockchain NFT system that doesn't have gas fees. Mm. And so you can only do a taco that's a couple bucks on IC because there's no gas fees. Because if I did this on Ethereum, it would be, I'm not saying this is going to be the price, I'm just making it up. It'd be five bucks for the taco plus $135 in gas fees. That doesn't work. That's like driving to Mexico to get your taco. Yes. That's not a sustainable solution at all. And so here, it'll be the price of the taco plus 0 0.001 tra cents transaction fee. And so it specifically highlights uh, the love of tacos and it highlights the zero gas fee. And then uh, it's important that your taco have utility, not just aesthetic beauty. Right. And so your taco will act as a gate uh, accessing a private social network called the Taco Portal, where you can only post about tacos. And that's on Discover, right? And that's powered by Discover. That's exactly right. So we're using Discover's built-in abilities, and I'm really excited. They're adding new functionality all the time. And so we're trying to create a community of taco lovers, and we want to make it very accessible. I really want to reach to people. Obviously, I really want to pull in the IC community. That's kind of the low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. But I want to reach out to people outside of crypto because I really designed this to be an appealing project to people as my first crypto uh, NFT too. And I think being able to say, hey, it's like a couple bucks and you get what you pay for, you mm -hmm. know, and so uh, a couple of the other things with this. So like I said, all the different um, attributes and characters and hand drawn pieces. They will all be, uh, there will be rarities and different uh, attributes and different rarities. So there will be, you know, an interesting from, from floors up to ultra rare. Uh, we're building in a ton of surprises. I'm kind of burying the lead on a lot of stuff we're doing. Oh, nice. I, wanna, I really want, I want that surprise and delight when you mint a taco and see what you get. I really want people to enjoy the experience and have fun with it. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really important to me. And then I want to over deliver. And so in my, uh, I have a FAQ 
uh, on the website that you can check out where I answer a bunch of the questions I get. One of the big ones has been, will there be vegan tacos? This is a question I've gotten a bunch of times. And the answer <laughs> is yes, there will be vegan tacos, but you won't be able to order your vegan taco at Mint. You'll have to pick that up off the secondary market in order to ensure that you have a, a vegan. I mean, they're all pixels. So technically, I guess they're all vegan, but the picture is not a vegan. Um, and one of the other questions is, do you, you know, tacos are a street food. Where's your roadmap? Yeah. And the answer there is we don't have a roadmap because we're delivering everything we promise on day one, on day one. which is trying to change the culture of crypto. Uh, I also added the question, is this a rug pull? Because it lets me make the joke that if I did do a rug pull, it would be a tortilla pull a tor <laughs> and <laughs> it would be a tortilla pull, but it's not a rug pull because we're delivering everything on day one. You get, you get your JPEG which you can sell, you can hold, you can eat if you want, technically. Uh, you can do whatever you want. And then you get access to this community. And I, you know, again, I've got some other stuff planned that I'm really excited to share. But we want to make sure that we want to get away from this idea. You know, I don't want to be a US security. I want to be real clear yeah. on that, which is tacos. But I want to get away <laughs> from, I want to structure in a different way where it's not, oh, will this be worth something in the future? What's the investment? It's this is you get a really fair deal up front for this piece of digital art you're supporting you know the creativity and the artists it's a really small project by design with really modest aims that we think we can really uh overachieve at as well and so i'm i'm super excited what else what else can i tell you about the tacos well i mean i'm i'm just i'm excited because because you are flipping it kind of on its head in terms of you're saying no roadmap we're just going to deliver everything day one we're going to be very clear on what the expectation should be if you want to participate it's more about bringing a community which i've always thought nfts are really actually one of their core benefits is um and then uh the fact that um you're being very open about Hey, the process, this is the process, right? Uh, we're going to use the self mint tool on Entrepro, which I think crypto nineties, uh, they did actually, I can tell you they did not. Oh, they did. Oh, okay. They did not. They, they intended to, and they ended up not doing it because they built their layers, um, in such a way that they were unable uh, to do it. So I actually had some stuff where I wanted to do, I originally had some like one of ones. So the way the tool is currently, again, the tool is very much in active development, the way it's currently structured is you have a choice when you're setting it up, which is either here is a full set of JPEGs and a spreadsheet with metadata. Mm -hmm. And so you can upload, here's all the finished art, in which case you can do whatever you want and do that. Or if you upload all the different layers, those layers are sorted into folders, you know, and then you say, pick one of each from each layer. There's no way to say, if you use layer from layer two, if you use this layer, this layer is incompatible with all the right. other layers above it. So everything has to work with everything if you're using the self mint tool. I see. Obviously, if you design your canister from scratch, you can do whatever you want. Or if you export everything to flat JPEG up front, you can do whatever you want there. But like I said, by design, I, I like, um, I'm a big believer that restrictions breed creativity. Mm -hmm. I'm really wanting to carve out a process that's repeatable for people in the future. So that, because again, I think I want more people to use NFTs for this purpose, mm -hmm. to form communities and grow things. And I want to build my own reputation as a maker in the community too, because I don't want this to be my last project. This is mm -hmm. just my first project. And so I want, I want people to really feel like, hey, I participated in Taco NFTs and I was really happy with the experience and felt like I was treated well and I got you know, what I said I was going to get. Right. And so that lays that groundwork of, it's the same thing, you know, you sign up for a Kyle newsletter and then you read it and think, this is great, I want more of this. The next newsletter comes, it's more of that great Kyle content. It's not someone hawking my NFTs. Hey, your newsletter should hawk my NFTs. Hey. It could be way more, have you ever thought about making your newsletter way more shilly like this podcast? It's, it's, you know? it's, it's gonna go that direction. I can <laughs> <laughs> got, we, got some, we got some things for so, sale. So, you know, you know I, I like that it's not IC tacos um, because nope. what you're, you're, again, you're trying to expand the community, not not just basically, hey, there's a pool of IC. Um, yeah, well, tacos kind of should bars. be served hot, not mm -hmm. icy. Uh, unless it's a, unless it's a boom, boom. Chaco taco. Oh, Chaco tacos are one of those things as a kid, it was just phenomenal. And then I'm still, as an still adult, good. Oh, really? I, I had, uh, one, I had one like five years ago. Too, and I was like, well, oh. now you, now you eat it and you realize how incredibly sweet it is. Yeah, it's just yeah. overwhelming sugar. Yeah, and the, the, the shell was, was mushy. Um, mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know if they, they probably, anyways, 
um, we, we've gone so far off topic. We, we started this podcast by no, saying, we're hey, right, we, we're, we, we're right where we're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. This is right where we're supposed to be. So anyways, your, your tacos are meant to go outside the IC community, um, as much as inside, you know, and, and, or and grow, it, I think of it as growing the IC community, yes, right? Okay, it's yeah. growing crypto. It's growing, growing the IC community. It's highlighting the IC space and technology staff. Yeah. And so the specific points of the, again, the specific points of the internet computer I want to highlight are the reverse gas fees, mm -hmm. that crypto is for communities and that it's a play space and creator space for entrepreneurs and highlighting the tech stack. So Discover, mm -hmm. Entrepo, Stoic Wallet, all these different pieces that that work together to achieve these things. Yeah. And so we're, we're starting, the Discord is launching now. I really wish it wasn't a Discord. I wish it was on IC. But as soon as we get uh, as soon as we mint and we have people and we move over to our taco portal powered by Discover, my intention is that's going to become the real home that mm -hmm. we're going to live in long term and the community will grow out of. And nice. then I've been thinking, what do you think about this idea? If I mint out 100%, I will get one of them tattooed on my on myself. What do you think? <laughs> so what do you think of that idea? I, I think what you have to do is um, somehow bring the community into that so that they get yeah. to like pick the the ingredients that go on your taco tattoo. I, I was thinking maybe people would nominate could nominate there. That would be a nice, uh, but, that would really help raise the value of one of those floor, floor tacos. Yeah. Is, so it, uh, you, it's only the, the voting is only being done through discover. So you have to have your NFT to get gated into there. So oh, abs absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to say on which taco I get, if it's important to you, I get a blue corn tortilla. You're going to need, uh, you're going to you need to it. pony up some big taco bucks to, <laughs> to get in there and, and get your taco. Um, but I want to, you know, we're, like I said, we're recording this before the community has officially launched. And I want to put, I want to put a little, little Easter egg, a little, a little huevos taco hidden deep inside the podcast here. So Kyle, you're going to come up with a secret phrase and the first 10 people to tweet this phrase at, and join the taco NFT discord. So tweet at NFT uh, mm -hmm. at, at, at tacos underscore NFTs. And uh, there'll be a link in the show notes. So what is the secret phrase they should tweet? And the first 10 people to do this will get whitelist. Jesse's taco tattoo should be on his butt. All right. You guys heard it. Jesse's taco tattoo should be on his butt is the secret passphrase. First 10 people to tweet that at the Taco NFTs account <laughs> will get instant whitelist status. You just have to join the Discord because we're building the whole thing into Discord roles. So that that is the tacos. I'm really excited. Uh, there'll definitely be a lot more info coming. I want to grow it. I'm excited to kind of get the input from the community. I think it's like a wholesome, enthusiastic space. And again, just trying to create the kind of communities and experiences that I want. I don't want to call it dog fooding. That feels inappropriate for a taco. Although this is, I will mention my local taco stand does do what they call a dog taco, which is if you order a taco for a dog, they make the taco and then they chop it up with their knives and the tortillas all get chopped up and put in a foil pouch for feeding to a dog. And it's Aww. the cutest thing in the world. I'm glad that that's where that taco went. Because when you said That is not taco, where you thought was dog like, taco oh, was, was going. I know. I know. <laughs> Jesse, just tanked, you just tanked our podcast and your NFT at the same time. <laughs> oh, no, hopefully <laughs> no, no, no. hopefully they'll they'll survive. Yeah, no, we're good. So, yeah, no, right. I'm, I, so I, I'm really excited because, um, again, you, you, you're, you've got a novel idea, um, or at least you're going back to the basics of what NFTs should be on the internet computer, or at least one variation of them should be. And you're also being open about, here's how I'm doing it. So you're, you're basically opening up the door to allow other entrepreneurs to come in and be like, okay, this isn't a very tech, like this doesn't have to be technical. You failed out of a Toka bootcamp, you know, not to bring up a sore subject, but like, so you don't have to be a developer to do these kind of projects. Um, you I really... dropped out voluntarily. I wasn't, oh, what... I wasn't, I wasn't asked to leave. I showed myself the door. I see. <laughs> that's not what Seb said, but that's okay. That's, I mean, I, that's, oh, that's Seb. <laughs> he was so disappointed in me. Maybe if I give him a taco, he'll, I'll get back in his good graces. Yeah. So, uh, so over lunch today, I started converting over um, my Bitcoin, some of my Bitcoin, not all of it, but some of my Bitcoin over to ICP. And uh, a lot of that was just because um, 
the two main neurons, so 411 and 412, which had millions of ICP, um, they dispersed most of it. 412 still has um, 2 million ICP, but there's like 3 million ICP that came to the market in like three days and the price didn't budge at all. And there's only 2 million left to come to the market over like the next month um, from from these large neurons. So I was like, you know, if you, you know, we've talked about like zone one, zone two, I think we're basically going into zone two now. And so I'm almost willing to say that that ICP Bitcoin pair has bottomed. And uh, so I did it all around. Uh, it was um, there's three zeros and then four zero five is kind of that pair, the ICP BTC pair um, number where I started converting it all over. Interesting. So what um, like from a percentage perspective, what percent of your Bitcoin holdings and we'll just, I mean, I don't, we don't know what that number is. I don't think it's appropriate for you to share it. So I and the collective audience will just assume millions and millions of, of dollars worth of Bitcoin. But what percentage of your Bitcoin are you are you moving over? I mean, I am Satoshi, so I have a lot. <laughs> um, a lot. No, I did. So today I did. I'm Satoshi. 40. I just have a day, day job on my side. I, just, on the side and, I, pod, you know, I podcast, I podcast to help make, help make ends meet, you know. And... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if I ever moved, you know, if Satoshi ever moved his Bitcoin, I mean, instantly the price would probably cut 50% um, mm -hmm. because it's assumed that those Bitcoin are, are basically burned at this point. Um, no, so like 40%. Uh, right around there is about what I converted over today. I, I don't know if I'll do any more um, because I, I do love my Bitcoin. It it was like selling a kid. Um, maybe not that bad, but... Uh, you have but four it, kids. It, you could afford to sell, I got, sell one I got a few to get off. rid of. Yeah, you got... You got <laughs> Uh, so forty percent. So you sold, uh, you sold, you know, one and two thirds of a child off today. Exactly. Yeah. Good math. Is good it thing. good math? Hold on. It's close. Yeah, sure. It's close. I'm, I'm just yeah. ballparking it. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So, uh, well, congratulations on being a. Uh, does this make you an ICP whale? I can, I can only assume then. So you. I don't uh, know. I, you know, I don't know. I don't want to uh, go too down the specifics, but it's. Um... <laughs> It's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a good, it's a, I'm, I'm, what I should say is I'm putting my um, dollars or my crypto tokens where my mouth is. And so, you know, what I've been putting out on Twitter or on Substack, I think, uh, I, I, you know, I firmly believe and, and I'm backing it up with my investment decisions. So speaking of what you've been putting out there on Twitter, I've got a tweet from you here that I wanted to ask you about. Uh, you wrote, I'll do a better data analysis in the future, but every time I go to the dashboard, the cycle's burn rate is two or three times what it just was a few weeks ago. What What is up with, with cycles? So cycles are um, what, what if you're a developer and you deploy an app on the IC, cycles are what you use to pay for that. So that's storage and computation. So cycle burn is almost a direct um, way to measure the growth of the internet computer, how much it's being used, apps and like that. It's uh, the fuel source, and we can yeah. count up the number of logs by the fire and see exactly what's what's gone in to, or I guess coal would maybe it's a it's the coal next to the train engine that we're yeah. all we're all shoveling in there to make this make this monster go. Right, right. Actually, that's a great analogy because coal costs money. You wouldn't burn it for no reason, um, and cycles you won't burn for no reason either. Um, and so that's a great, it's a great measurement. Now, uh, back in March, early March, late February, maybe there was Sonic went live and they started burning ICP, uh, for, um, for their DeFi application for swaps. And, um, so that kind of threw off those numbers, but that has, I haven't looked into it, but I, I, last time I did look into it, maybe two weeks ago that the, their, their burn rate was pretty, um, Pretty minimal. So I think that the recent burn over the last like week or two has uh, um, is legit, and it really is a sign that we're reaching a um, uh, where we're not just growing linearly, but I think we're starting to see that first inning where our um, ecosystem growth is maybe, maybe, maybe going a little bit more parabolic. So let's see. It's either in a baseball game inning or it's a uh, train. I think we have to pick a metaphor. I'm not sure these these metaphors are compatible with each other exactly. It's a choo-choo train going around the four bases. The <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, if you go to dashboard.internetcomputer.org, um, 
I think it's org, maybe .com. Uh, try both, see what you get. But there's a thing that just says cycles per second. Uh, usually that's been around like one or two trillion every time I went and checked. Uh, recently it's been three, sometimes two trillion, three trillion, four trillion. Uh, I saw it one time it was eight trillion. Somebody got a good screenshot on Twitter about it being at 16 trillion. Um, so yeah, we're, we're burning. That's a, that's a lot of cycles. Yeah, and so it's the fuel that makes them go. And so... What we don't know is, is there like a hundred projects coming online, you know, at the same time? Is there one big project? You know, what is driving this? I think is the big question I want to know. Yeah. And that's, that would require a deep data dive. And uh, hopefully I can get, get around to that soon. Excellent. Well, I'm, I guess I'm looking forward to it. All right, Kyle, let's do a little ask neurotic here. Our first question comes from G Gamrus and it is, what IC app would you build using the no code ICME app platform? And thank you. Thanks for being so polite, Gamrus. Have you looked at ICME? I have actually. I um I set up an account a couple months ago and played around with it. And then uh, recently actually just um topped up my account to play around with their IC Mint application. Yeah. So um so I'll start so I mean what would I build? I I'm, I'm literally trying to build something um and can you, uh, can you give us some alpha what's what's coming what's coming down the pipe yeah so i mean i've been i've been toying around with the idea of doing some sort of like icp price analysis report and then maybe releasing it as an nft every month uh and then having it be limited edition so you know i can control like hey there's only a certain number that are available for purchase um and uh i've been so this week i've been playing around with their ic mint and it's on the so i see me i see io they have another product if you're part of that membership there's another product called ic mint um it's actually really straightforward you just uh it takes like 12 12 trillion cycles you just put in a name it'll create three canisters for you one's got like a ui for you another hold your um hold your uh nfts and everything but then it's released you can upload any file and it'll uh create an nft for you um so that's one example and then in general um, I see me, they, I think they've got a really, um, big roadmap, but right now they're still kind of in this beta stage for, um, the, um, for the website developer, right? So you can basically take HTML, drop it in real easily, and it'll build a website and deploy it to a canister for you. You can also, there's a um, basic website development where you can change background, put in, um, different sections, kind of do a little bit like your CSS control through their interface, which is kind of nice. I describe it as they're building Squarespace on top of the yeah. internet computer, uh, and like WYSIWYG drag and drop toolkit for, for, you know, dumb non-coders like me. And if you have, you know, if you're, you know, I guess Satoshi rich, like Kyle is here and just have 12 trillion cycles lying around, which is like 10 bucks actually. Yeah. It really uh, is you can, it just sounds really good when you, when you put it like that, you can spin it up and host. And so they pay like, they're reasonably price competitive at around, cause you have to pay like a monthly fee to host with them, but it's not yeah. too expensive. It's ha I mean, half an, half an ICP per month. Pretty, pretty reasonable. And so, yeah. And so they're building out different modules that will be able to drag and drop in there. So you can do your banners and your website and build all sorts of different interfaces. But what makes me really excited about what they're building is they're building module modules that build and dig deeper into unleashing the underlying power of the internet computer. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is kind of what I'm always looking for when someone shows me anything they're building, be it yeah. NFT project or, you know, a full blown DAP you know, how are you, we've got all these tools, what are you building on the IC that takes advantage of these powerful tools that are made available to you? Because I think that's going to be the key to success here. Mm -hmm. And so their self-minting tool, it's actually really, really interesting. So it's more specifically, it's a module that allows you, the author, to mint. And so it mints it directly into your wallet. And so this bypasses yeah. everything else. So you create the mint upload your JPEG, and then you set all the information, including price and things like that. And then you have the ability to sell that off. So if you wanted to experiment, actually, it's funny, someone just DM'd me earlier today and said, I want to sell like a collection of 100 NFTs. And this could actually be if you, you know, if you're not doing generative art or something, if you are doing scans of hand drawings or something, mm -hmm. you know, everything's a one of one, this could be a really, really great 
way to do it. And so you have the ability to build in, uh, mint your NFTs, you can set your royalty, it's all no code. And then it actually will create a gallery that you can do it. And so what I love though, is it's a module that you'll then be able to embed into a bigger website, all powered by ICME. Yeah. And, and they've, they've done it in, um, so the way they've done their IC mint is not really, um, geared towards like the self mentor that Entrepro is doing where it's more about like community and here's an art project and everything like that. They've really done it from a different perspective of an NFT could be a legal document, right? You want it, may want to take your contracts and convert them into an NFT, um, and have them live on the blockchain forever. Or maybe you want um, to take some uh, business documents and, and offer them up for sale. Or like in my case, right, a, a monthly report is not something you'd create, um, you know, you wouldn't sell that on Entrepro. So that's like a great example of like, hey, this is really simple. It took me two minutes um, to spin up. And um, so it, I feel like it's going to democratize some of these use cases. And again, going back to the idea of an innovator's playground, this, you you don't have to come with a the skill set of, I need to know how to build a website and deploy a website to a canister and then also build a mentor and then also mint this NFT. And I, to do this project, I need to have 15 different skills. No, no, no. We're now starting to get the tools where you can have just a few skills and then utilize these tools for some For just ones. 13 skills instead of 15 skills. Exactly. You can, you can do it. I mean, I think that's that's great. And it's, uh, I think, lowering the barrier to entry mm -hmm. uh, is really, really good. But then at the same time, what I want to see is higher quality projects too. Mm -hmm. That what I'm excited about here is right now being being a developer and having the ability to get a pro either yourself or pay someone you know to get a project developed is a very high barrier to entry. By lowering that barrier of entry, we can get more projects that bring other skill sets. So you know the world's best community builders, artists, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, innovators they're not necessarily developers, and so being able to build on it. And then this actually dovetails with I was uh, I was in one of those conversations where you establish a crypto safe word and explain here's what an you know here's what a blockchain is here's what an NFT is here's what a taco NFT is like, <laughs> like you do and I was explaining this and one of the points I was like really hammering home and I think ICME kind of picks up on this in an interesting way is it is a quirk of the evolution of the blockchain and its applications that we even talk about NFTs being ape drawings in the first place. Like yeah. there's absolutely no technical reason whatsoever that an NFT has a JPEG at its core foundation. It's almost a little, it's sort of this little Darwinian offshoot of the technology that has exploded and blossomed, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that way at all. Right. Yeah. It's anything. I mean, an NFT is literally anything digital that lives out at an address that you can then point a wallet to uh, on a blockchain for account uh, for ownership. Exactly. Right. So we have cryptocurrencies. Those are logged on the ledger. Mm -hmm. And all an NFT is, is what if you had a ledger entry that wasn't tied to a coin mm -hmm. and just pointed at something? And a that's digital something, item. Digital item, right? Or even it turns out it can point to a deed to a house and then that points to a physical item. And there's some people playing around with that kind of thing too. Yeah. And so I think it's very interesting, exciting technology. And if anything, I think that's one of the reasons a lot of us that have drinking way too much crypto Kool-Aid talk about NFTs as having this incredible potential is in a lot of ways, the fact that NFTs are used to make mutant apes, again, is like this distraction from all the other things. And also, yeah, so I kind of come down on NFTs. I want to see full-blown art with no utility whatsoever, just dedicated to supporting artists and creating mm -hmm. communities. And I want to see really interesting, innovative stuff that has really, really great utility. And what I don't want to see is stuff that really insists on putting them together, like my project, I guess, now that I'm saying it all <laughs> out loud, where I've got, you know, this is where I talk myself back out of it again. No, um, no, no, no. It's fine. You're good. It's Your fine. Your project's it's awesome. It's good. Your project right, is exactly what NFTs were created for. Kyle, Kyle approves of my project, so all of you can can jump in there now. I'll. It'll be fun uh, once we really get things growing. I'm gonna I'm gonna dump some raw data on you, and Ooh. you know you'll make you'll press that data into a flat tortilla that I can understand. Hey, I think I think what you should do is create an entrepreneur button. Um, so when it goes live, that actually is literally just mint the entire collection. So, <laughs> so one person comes, they click that button and you're done. I think a really good label for that button would be if you're Kyle, click here. 
Click is here. what I'll label it, and then it just mints 100% Put, of the collection. And you're like, all 10, your ICP. Yeah, 10,000 tacos <laughs> living on Kyle's blockchain. <laughs> and then I'm in this Discord, uh, the uh, Discover uh, um, uh, portal, just talking to myself, hosting yeah. tacos. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll be there. Some of our mods that are already going to be in there will be uh, there. Rick will be there, you know. And yeah. so it'll, I mean, it'll be lonely, but you'll really corner the market on tacos, on the other hand. It's how know? I buy friends. <laughs> Hey buddy, what am yeah. I? There's there's Kyle standing on the corner of a canister with a trench coat, opens it up and goes, Hey buddy, you want a taco? You want a taco? What, what you want? I got blue okay. masa, white masa, you want some guac, no what guac. You, yeah, what you need, what you need. Oh my gosh, so I want I, a taco so bad right now. Every day, man. Every day. I mean, that's the thing. Everyone's like, now I want a taco. And I'm like, I live in this headspace all the time. Yeah. And I'm just like a virus infecting people with a desire. It's like a zombie bite, only it's like a taco just, bite. That makes you want tacos? It's the way taco bites back. Yeah, there you go. All right, oh, you're man. hired for our marketing department. <laughs> so speaking of marketing, we've got another question here from our good friend, Mr. Pink. Uh, Mr. Pink asks, the community believes it's on a high-tech yacht to paradise. Got two tickets for people on this podcast. Two tickets to paradise. Sorry, go on. No, now we're going to do karaoke for the rest of the show. <laughs> Everyone else thinks we're boarding the Titanic. The paradox is if we don't convince enough people our boat is not the Titanic, then they were right and we're on our way to an iceberg. How do we market the Titanic? I'm not sure I entirely appreciate the sort of downer note this question's on, presupposing <laughs> the context says it is. But I think there is a there is a, you know, if I could if I could borrow uh borrow a little term of the trade, wag me, we're all going to make it mm -hmm. right. You know, either the, the internet computer is either going to go or not going to go. And, you know, you and I have talked about this in past episodes that, you know, uh, we never know exactly what's going to happen, but what we both firmly believe is that ICP is not going to stay where it is now price wise, yep. right. In terms of price action, it will either go up a lot or it will go down the rest of the way. And those are really the only two outcomes that the sort of middling, you know, that eight year gang, you know, you're not going to spit out at the end of that eight years and say, see that it's at 20 bucks. That's not right, you know, right. I think a realistic expectation yeah. for what's going to happen. So what, why, why is there this huge disconnect in the broader crypto space? And, and what do we do about it besides found a podcast because obviously that's one of my solutions to the problem <laughs> oh check we've already done that you know what's the funny thing about this question is if if the rest of the community so with the titanic they thought that that was an unsinkable ship right and yet it sank on its main um, maiden voyage so if this question is basically if everyone thinks that we're the titanic that means that they think we're unsinkable but really um will sink. So I guess in a way it's like we flip it. So uh, that means that in reality, everyone thinks we'll sink, but in reality, we're not going to sink. Is that how? I took this to mean that you're Jack and I'm Rose and you're going to draw me like one of your French girls. And then I'm going to let you drown for absolutely no reason. At the end of the <laughs> that um, Spoiler alerts for Titanic, uh -oh. I guess. <laughs> it, the ship goes down. Yeah. Is that a, is that a pop culture reference that you understood? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. The biggest yeah. movie of all time. You picked up, you got that one. I got that one. All right. Hey, I'm good. on, I'm on top. <laughs> that was Aaron Sork, Sorkin Stan. What was his name? No. Aaron? Well, that's a was James Cameron. That? That's a James yeah. Cameron number. I remember no. that because he had that and then he had Avatar. And so it was like, he's just basically minting insanely grossing films. I miss Terminator movies. <laughs> were, were those Cameron? Oh yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Cameron and then my favorite my fair and then I mean the real yeah I mean Terminator 1 Terminator 2 those are both James Cameron movies James Cameron also directed Aliens the sequel mm -hmm. the uh to the Ridley Scott movie Alien oh yeah and there's a famous story about James Cameron's pitch for making Aliens was he wrote Alien on the board and then he added an S and put a dollar sign through the S. And that was his pitch <laughs> to the studio. And they were like, yes, we will do that. Exactly that is good. That. <laughs> I like the idea of money. So in terms of uh, the IC, is it, is it the Titanic, Jesse? This is a topic that comes up all the time. And, and now's as good a time as any to tackle it. That This question lying just below the surface of this question, just below the iceberg 
in the oh, cold man. water nice. is is what happened with the token launch. I feel like that mm. is kind of a, a sort of embedded in this question. And this is great because I really want the opportunity to talk a little bit more about this and dig in a little bit. So my theory is that uh, Definity with the token launch for ICP became a victim of their own success, that they pitched and raised money from all the right people. They really got you know buy-in from Silicon Valley at the very highest levels, that the token, you know, the normal life of a token is you start small and then as you grow, you establish yourself, you get added to the big exchanges like Coinbase. And that is sort of like a um, stamp of approval to when you've achieved that level of, mm -hmm. you know, hey, you're now listed on Coinbase. And that creates a giant jump as well as sales and all of those things. And ICP broke the mold, right? And so they, instead of getting added to Coinbase down the road once they were a proven thing, Instead, they launched on Coinbase. They launched this sort of nascent baby brand new. It's like, you know how child actors have their whole lives destroyed because they get too famous when they're children? Yeah. This is what happened to ICP. It's a child <laughs> actor and it screwed up its whole you know, adolescence as a result of being too, it's a victim of its own um, fault. And so, you know, traditional crypto logic says you look at the all time high and that's the potential a coin has. And so everyone looks at that all-time high and they just say, well, it dropped 90%. And I think you and I both subscribe to the belief that that creates 90% opportunity. That's mm -hmm. what the DCA opportunity is here, that it launched so spectacularly and overachieved so incredibly that it created a fall from grace that was even steeper. And that's what created it. And it is not a rug pull. It is not a get-rich-quick scheme. In fact, I don't, you know, there's really no reason or evidence that any of the VCs or the founding team have dumped their coins. That's been repeatedly debunked. You mm -hmm. can go back and look at the ledger yourself. I'm sure, Kyle, you've engaged in some of this behavior too. You can go see these things. There was not a massive enrichment opportunity. All those really early seed stage and VC investments, they're all locked into the NNS for years and years and years. And what we're seeing as those coins come off the NNS slowly as they're being restaked as well. And so mm -hmm. the system is working as intended. The problem was they overhyped the machine so hard and so fast and did such a good job that it, it boiled over. And that's what yeah. created this sort of epic crash that we've dealt with. So I think that's one piece. And I think the other piece is that crypto is so full of snake oil salesmen and false promises and five-year whitelist roadmap plans that are, you know, completely full of shit, quite frankly, mm -hmm. that people look at the internet computer and the internet computer is run by a bunch of computer nerds that deliver on exactly what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, there's this weird dichotomy where, and I think in a lot of ways, uh, they deliver too honestly and too realistically on their roadmap. And as a result, are delivering in a lot of ways that look like a traditional tech company where they say, we're going to build this, and then they do do it. Yeah. You know, Intel puts out their chip roadmap, and then they hit, I mean, eventually, not always on time, but they hit those metrics as they go along instead. And that is how Definity works with managing the roadmap for the internet computer. They have, you know, obviously we've talked in the past, they have the largest, you know, number of developers of almost any crypto project. They're constantly the number one largest GitHub commits. They're actively improving this. And if anything, I think the sort of broad crypto space goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I'm interested in this shiny fantasy. And ICP in a lot of ways isn't selling a fantasy, it's selling a reality. Yeah. And what you and I like to talk about is not, hey, here's what IC is going to be able to do in two years when all this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens. Mm -hmm. We talk about IC like Bitcoin integration is happening now. Like the test net is live now. That is coming right. online this spring. These things are all happening. And so that dichotomy and that delta between what we as insiders looking at the system and looking at all the pieces that are being put in place and all the capacity and the ability of it to actually execute now compared to not being vapor, I think every, a lot of the crypto world is so used to trading in vapor that they're, it's almost like, I don't even know what, to, I don't know how to respond to this. This is so foreign to me. This is like, you're speaking a different language. Right. Like, like within crypto, you pretty much just have to keep one upping the, the last person who made an outlandish claim and 
uh, you know, to be, to, to get any kind of traction. And so when you're just, when you're not marketing yourself, you're not getting any, um, you know, any uh, recognition because, you know, the, the market is looking for that great story to tell. And, and when you're just delivering, that's not necessarily an exciting story. That's exactly right. And so, you know, as as I've mentioned before, I am a paid shill. I am on the till. I, I take money from Definity to market and promote the internet computer. And part of the reason I constantly am telling that is one, I'm a really bad liar. And I like being <laughs> I like disclosing to people and being really honest. And I have a terrible memory. And if I just tell people the truth, I don't have to remember what I've lied about because I didn't lie. So whatever I told them. I don't have to remember what I said because whatever I said, I can be confident in myself that it was true. Mm -hmm. And so I like being honest with people. And also, I was hired as part of a broader effort to improve marketing on the internet computer. Yeah. Like my role existing at all speaks to Definity, the organization, saying this is a problem. This is something we need to fix. And they are making lots of changes. Um, they just announced today, in fact, breaking news, bringing breaking news. Uh, that they just hired a new head of growth. Oh, I hadn't uh, seen to that. To Definity as well. Yeah, she actually comes over from. Her name is Ava Ober Oberholzer, and uh, she's the new chief growth officer. Great title. Oh wow! And uh, she comes over from Cardano, you know, and so ah. obviously brings brings a little of that Cardano storytelling uh, that they've been super super successful at. Yeah. And you know, I look at. I don't want to. That's kind of the opposite. I don't want to besmirch. I, I don't want to yeah. besmirch any of our crypto brethren out there. But I think if you combine Cordano's ability to weave a story and a mm -hmm. narrative about what they're doing with the internet computer's ability to deliver, that's where you end up in the headspace you and I are in, which is maybe I should convert forty percent of my Bitcoin into <laughs> IC because I think it's now. Did you did you stake? Uh, that uh, I, ha I just, haven't yet. I, you know, just, I just did it today. It's going to take some time. But, but honestly, you took it. You took it off the exchange, though, right? Yeah, you moved it. Of okay, good. Okay, good. That's important. Of course. Um, no, they don't. They don't keep my keys. The uh, so the only other thing I would say, in addition to all this, I think you're spot on, Jesse. Um, as always. Um, well, I don't know about always, but thank you. No, nah, no, nah, yeah, 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 often. Maybe I'll say often. Um, but just yeah, the 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 thing too that to remember is we don't necessarily have to compete on crypto's terms. Um, you know, there's also uh, this whole field, and we're already starting to do it, right? Like like we were talking about with your taco NFTs on Discover, is there's this whole field of non non crypto because no other chain can do it. That is just greenfield, and the IC gets to write its own story. Um, and it really is that huge pie of people who aren't interacting with crypto because it doesn't bring them value. Uh, it's the first use cases where, hey, this is kind of a cool product that you can do only uh, only in this space. So um, anyways, so going back to Mr. Pink's question, is it Titanic? I, I, I think you and I agree. No, it's not. There probably is a chance that maybe we're just too early and the world's just not ready for this technology. Kind of like um, maybe like the Palm Pilot, I guess. Betamax, Max, Trail. Beta Max. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just because we're right doesn't mean we'll win. And in right, fact, history right. is littered with with people that were things that were better that didn't make it. And, yep. you know, I think, as always, with everything else, don't put money in. You can't afford to lose. I mean, we uh -oh. all think it's a strong choice, but you uh, uh, I know you can't. Well, you can't afford to lose financially. Your emotional issues are, are a well, separate, thing, separate yeah. issue. This dovetails really nicely with my When Moon article, actually, mm. that I put up recently. I put it up a few weeks ago, and it just got cross-posted on uh, Definity Community. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And I love when I get, like, the articles get, like, a whole second life when they come out on a separate space. Mm -hmm. But it's that I, I put When Moon, uh, and I'm, I'm just totally lying about what's really in that article. Because what I'm really talking about is the ability to build applications that sneak in crypto and blockchain functionality. And that I think is like the superpower the internet computer has that you can build the next Instagram, but instead of then tying it into selling things and giving Facebook 40% of your income, you can build in blockchain and money, you know, cash handling abilities using ICP. And that's really, really exciting. Other applications like uh, the forthcoming Catalyze that mm -hmm. is sort of Discord, but hosted on the blockchain. And they are going to be able to have like NFT drops and wallet functionality all built in on the application level. And so that's what I'm really excited about are 
applications that are really primarily really exciting, interesting, utility-driven web apps that right. sneak in really interesting blockchain technology. And that's what I'm looking forward to being a breakout hit. Because people don't interact with, you don't log on to the internet computer and go to use the internet computer. It's a developer toolkit and a mm -hmm. set of resources. What we interact with are applications that are built in on top of that level. Like you don't sit down to be like, let me work on my Mac and do Mac stuff. You know, you sit down and you open Photoshop or you use the Finder or you use some application built on top of that substrate layer. Yeah, you know, it kind of works into um, like in hockey, right? A big metric or even um, soccer or football for our non-American listeners <laughs> is, uh, you know, shots on goal is an important metric to look at. And and I think of that from like the internet computer, there's like this idea of like the surface area of success, right? We don't have to be successful just in NFTs or DeFi. We're not limited um, to just a few things where we're like, hey, we got to get this and this has to take off or we're in trouble. Rather, that surface area um, is pretty broad, and there's a lot of different areas that could really take off, and the internet computer would be just fine. So, um, so I let's. We... I want to bring it full circle to boat analogies. So we okay. agree it's definitely not the Titanic. What What is the boat analogy? We think we think this is what it, what kind of boat boat are we dealing with here? Maybe some sort of I... submarine iceberg metaphor where. Right now, you just see the little periscope popping up, but in fact, there's a whole gigantic boat hiding just below the surface. I think like a, in my mind, it's like an, uh, an aircraft carrier because it's, it's, it's a boat, but it goes way beyond that, right? Like, you know, it can fight probably not so well, like some, some naval warfare, but rather you're launching airplanes that can just do, they can bomb, they can do air to air uh, combat. Again, going back to like surface area of success, an aircraft carrier can really do a lot of a lot of different things. It's very versatile. That's what I'm going with. What are you going with? You, you I'm going to go with hub? Ship of Theseus, which I just want to use, but I haven't justified why quite yet. But I'm I'm working on it. Let's go with Ship of Theseus because the NNS allows us to uniquely upgrade and replace each plank. So if you pass ah, enough resolutions to I completely see. change, is it still the, the same? Is it still is it still the internet computer after after Kyle is done getting all of his resolutions passed? It took me a second to get what your reference was there. Nice. Have you heard of Ship of Theseus? Hey, we should do a we could do a um a whole uh pot. We don't have to do it now because we're running long, but we could do a whole podcast on um just like what are the different ways that the internet computer could succeed. I think that sounds that sounds great. Yeah, let's let's mark that down for a future show when nothing mm -hmm. happens. When we have a slow news week, yeah, yeah, uh, maybe maybe we'll slide that in there. But um, speaking of ship of Theseus, I think it's time to do some recommendations and put a put another plank into this. Nope that that metaphor broke. I went, took it. <laughs> I took it one one step too far, and we're taking on water. Uh, you, uh, you giggled with excitement earlier when you told me you've got a, a recommendation for us this week. What do you, what do you got? I, for so, so I'm setting a personal goal to just try to disgust you as much as I can with my recommendations. And yeah. uh, what other cinnamon based food have you yeah, brought for yeah. me to enjoy? Uh, last week you recommended a, a documentary that had, um, that had, that was basically had a documentary that was within it, right. That was mm -hmm, kind of occurring. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to recommend, uh, Tiger King which was the amazing Netflix series that came out right when the pandemic happened. Um, but in that, it, you made me think of it because there was, um, it was a, it's a documentary, but within it, there was also filming for another documentary that was going on. And that actually played a role in the actual Netflix documentary, which was kind of cool. But anyways, it's just good, trashy TV. Um, and uh, the one takeaway I took from it was um, you have a guy who is just crazy as can be, who hires the ammo salesman from Walmart to be his campaign manager uh, for governor of Oklahoma, and he gets 18% of the vote. And that's shocking to me because I think if I ran for governor and I tried my hardest, I wouldn't even get 1%. So Tiger King, great story, and, and he's, he's accomplished a lot in his life. Yeah, it really had that like it was one of those early it came out earlier in the pandemic and it had it was like right. Yeah, right when we all went home. That was when it came out. It had that sort of pop moment they're making. There's a sequel coming or filmed or about to come out. But uh, I just remember my big takeaway was, I mean, ever there's just everyone is bad. It's a little the show's a little exploitive. That's yeah. not, you know, it's not 
you know, it is, I think trashy is, is a popcorn is a good way to describe it, but these are real people's lives. But who I really loved on the show was Kelsey Saf Safari and he loses, I mean, spoiler, he loses an arm to, to a tiger bite in there, but is cool as a cucumber and is my hero. Yeah. And I really hope he forgot, has some awesome job him. somewhere, somewhere else besides there. So was there a guy who lost his leg as well? I think so. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure. One leg, one arm. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna take my own recommendation. I'm gonna rewatch this just because it's just such good uh, TV to make you just like feel good about yourself. <laughs> oh, now now I'm scrolling through the list, showing me all the people in the show. Um, Doc Antle, the other competing tiger. You know. Oh Wrangler, yes, yes, yes. And you know Carol Baskin, obviously Jeff Lowe, husband. who sells oh, him Lowe. out and becomes the the part owner. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a real it's a real cast of characters uh, on on Tiger King. But yeah, I remember when the whole world was obsessed with Tiger King, and it had its just, two month time frame. It, had, it was sort of like serial. It just sort of exploded and and captured the consciousness. Well, what's uh what's your rec? Well, now I want to change. Now I want to change my rack because now we're still in this like documentary vein here. Have you seen Exit Through the Gift Shop, the Banksy documentary? No. Let's go with Let's go with that. Uh, you're okay. familiar with Banksy, the street artist. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Banksy. I mean, I don't know him personally, but <laughs> are you okay, Satoshi? Are you Banksy? <laughs> is my other question. I'd like to know now. <laughs> you're like, yes, I am. All, I invented Bitcoin. I'm a world famous artist, and also on the side, on, I do I'm some podcasting. podcasting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go with Exit through the through the gift shop, uh, the Banksy documentary. Um, it came out right around the same time as like uh, Catfish. Another oh, okay. documentary, and it's a really great documentary that uh, it kind of tells you that it's lying to you, and then challenges you: Are you sure you're being lied? You know what is real in this documentary? What isn't? Okay. And so, so it's directed by Banksy. Um, for real? He is for real? Oh yeah. So it's directed by Banksy, and but it really centers. Uh, he's not really the main character. The main character is a guy named uh, Theory Guetta, who be- goes on to become an artist named uh, Mr. Brainwash okay. in the documentary. And so he's an obsessive filmer, and he gets interested in street graffiti and becomes, again, according to the documentary, it's hard to say what's real and what's not here, uh-huh. um, and beats, uh, he befriends Shepard Ferry. Who did like okay. the he did the Obama Hope right, poster Hope. as yep. well. And so uh he befriends Shepard Ferry and through Shepard Ferry meets Banksy and becomes this documentarian that is then uh filming all of these different street artists, including Banksy, and kind of going behind the scenes with Banksy. And then he, the theory who's been filming it, becomes his own artist and puts on a big show. And it is incredibly unclear if is Mr. Brainwash a real person? Is Theory a real person? Where did all this come from? It's really, really gripping. I, I think it's really fantastic. And it's so interesting watching Banksy make all, you see like his workshop, you know, and so he appears in the video uh, with a hood lit, uh, over his head lit so it's completely dark and then his voice obscured as well. Because okay. to this to this moment, no one knows if if it, you know, who he is exactly. It's totally unclear. Which is why I can claim to be him and Satoshi at the same time. He does a thing where he sets up a, uh, like in Central Park in New York, and they just sell Banksy prints for 50 bucks and everyone walks by assuming they're all fakes, but they are in fact all real, authentic, real, crazy, real stuff like that. They do stuff where they're sneaking, uh, they're sneaking uh, art into Disneyland and putting in like Abu Ghraib themed art in the middle of Disneyland. Um, I don't think it's in the documentary, but later there, there was a kind of a famous thing where there was a Banksy print that was in like a giant elaborate gold frame. And it was uh, unbeknownst to anyone hooked up electronically so that as soon oh, as, yes, as the, the auction uh, ended, as the auction ended, yeah, it sorry. shredded the artwork, thus becoming more valuable, more valuable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, you know, art. And so, yeah, so you I actually think, and it's one of those things where I would say there's, uh, there's some interesting analogies to NFTs too here, mm-hmm. right? Cause we're dealing with pseudonymous artists. We're dealing with questions about 
you know, provenance and, are, you know, is what you're looking at real? It, can you trust it? But the movie is super entertaining, highly recommended. I really like it. And now I see uh, Space Invader is one of the people in it, too. And he does cool little tile installations everywhere. And so he does okay. tile installations that look like the Space Invaders from like the uh, retro arcade game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so now I see Space Invader art all over Los Angeles, actually. Oh, which really? Is, which is kind of cool. like um, Banksy art and stuff like that. Was it Tanby? Tanby? Uh, those tiles? Mm -hmm. They were putting like they're just random tiles showing up in cities all across mm -hmm. America. Yeah. That yeah, kind of same exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That, exactly. It. So. Uh, so yeah, exit through the not what I was planning on recommending, but uh, let's go with let's nice. go with exit through the gift shop, man. It's uh, uh, I really enjoyed it. It's it's I would what I would say is it is unclear what is real and what is not real in it, and it's definitely not a hundred percent real, and it's also definitely not a hundred percent fake. And the okay. question of you know this movie came out when did it come out? Uh, two thousand ten, and I don't feel like there's been any updates or clarity on exactly what is real or what is not. Interesting. Since then, so it's so this uh, is still kind of early in Banks Banksy's like rise to because the, the the whole he was pretty thing he was, was big. Recent. That was that was out. That was more yeah. recent. But like the Banksy like book had long been out and stuff. Okay. Like I remember when this movie came out, I definitely knew who Banksy was. Ah, uh, okay, and okay. Like and because he would when the movie like toured and stuff, he didn't go to he didn't appear at the premieres or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But wherever the premieres were happening, Banksy art would be appearing in that city at any given moment. Oh, too. interesting. Cool. Yeah, him painting on the wall separating Palestine and Israel is in the movie. Too. Okay. So really, really cool stuff. Uh I enjoyed it. And it's like I said, it's just in, I love documentaries that just dig deep into these little worlds and are full yeah. of these interesting people. It's one of those truth is stranger than fiction you know, yeah, kind, yeah. Of, kind of moments. So good, good movie, rec good recommendations this week. I feel like we're, nice. we're figuring we're figuring this out bit by bit by bit. We're figure we're figuring it out. So, all right. I think that's going to do it for this episode of Neurotic. Another so good wanna, one. Another good one. All right. I want to thank uh, Kyle. Thank you, as always, for being here. You can follow Kyle on Twitter at, at Kyle Langham. I'm Jesse. You can follow me at, at ICP Jesse. Uh, ask us questions, send in recommendations, send in questions, send in ask neurotic questions at neurotic pod. Uh, please go join my Discord for buying tacos and please buy my digital tacos. And I think that's going to do it. Say goodbye, awesome. Kyle. Hey, have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>